Royal Highness, Your Highness. I present to you, Excellency, well, my most you. profound respect. It is a well. great honor and privilege for me to have the opportunity to pay a very respectful and fervent homage to Your Excellency, who has done so much and continue to do so much for the sake of my homeland and my people. I appreciate it so much. You're very honorable. So generous. Right. and then we can resume our conversation. Ralph Deverio, who's the National President, President of the Coast Guard Reserve. My pleasure to be here, Mr. Well, President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Brigadier General Elmas Ossery, U.S. Army. Good to see you, sir. Well, good, good, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant Commander Bill Smith. Good to see you, sir. Fine, Major David. Major Chip Holsworth. Well, Very good, good meeting, Mr. President. Well, good to see you. Glad you had to see you. God bless. Good to see you, God God bless. Bless. Good to see you again, sir. Well, it's always you. a pleasure. Thank you for giving us an opportunity. Well, listen. We're still fighting the battles with you and I for you, you and together. I was just going to say I thank you for all that you have done, the support for the things that are important, AWACS for Amen. 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 And the other things. <laughs> Sneak in there. If we could get in a little bit tighter, if we could. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful day you have for us today, Mr. President. Order it is. Thank you, Mr. President. Chief, the bill was saved. Veto paid off. We, uh, <laughs> we were in there together. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Mr. President, first, on behalf of the Reserve Officers Association, we want to thank you for your support you gave the Reserve Forces and the military during your tour of duty. And we're very grateful and want to express that appreciation to you. In addition, I have something from an old soldier, an old reserve <laughs> army colonel, who wrote the ROA March, which you're a member of our association, after World War II. And he presented it to Harry Truman, President Truman, who signed it. Here in the White House. Right here in the White House. And we would like to give you a copy of that for yourself. The sheet, when you take it out, the sheet music is in the back. And we're going to leave a copy with you. We're going to ask that you would sign it. We would like to hang that copy with your signature uh, in our archives at ROA. This is a copy of the, 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 of the music. The sheet the music is inside, Mr. President. And you want that? That's what you want? No, no, no. We, no, we have another copy. One. This is for you. This is yours. This is we yours. Brought another copy. <laughs> in there? You sure it's in there? Oh, yeah. That's oh, yes. real music. They have the copy. They have the copy. They have the copy. Oh. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, I thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Last time member, I'm not. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we've got an issue. I never, you know, I never, I never miss the opportunity. Uh, back in uh, '83, we fought for two decades to get that assistant sec def for reserve affairs. You signed the bill in the Congress, in their wisdom, one of those rare occasions, uh, passed the law, and you signed it. There's some reorganization going on now over in the Pentagon that in our judgment uh, diminishes the authority of that office and with the increase in the reserve capability, 
uh, I wanted to bring it to your attention, and I wouldn't leave without uh, leaving the letter and everybody shaking their heads, but I, 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 I want you to get it, because uh, we're in there to fight to keep this nation strong, and we think, again, with reserve forces now being one half or a little more, we need to have that exposure at a high level. So uh, we, uh, we, we want some help, we want some support, but we're in there hanging in there with you. God bless. Right. Well, thank you very much. And I, I should look into this. Good luck to, to no, the gentleman. You wouldn't be offended. I would have to tell when I was called to active duty in World War II. And uh, I have a vision problem. And I was tagged limited service by the cavalry. Uh, and you can't go abroad or anything uh, with that tag on there. But uh, again, they examined me up at Fort Mason in San Francisco. Two doctors. and. and they, took my glasses off, and I couldn't even read the top line. One of them said to me, if we sent you overseas, you'd shoot a general. <laughs> <laughs> the other one says, and you'd miss him. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> and other people wish they could. Did they find that out at Old Fort Des Moines, or <laughs> where was <laughs> it? No, that was after I got to Fort Mason. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. No, as a matter of fact, uh, there was a little cheating went on before the movie. <laughs> and they found out where I was without my glasses. They told me that there was a provision that, you know, no one in those days ever thought there could be another war. They told me that if you couldn't get to an army post for an examination, why well, you could just have a civilian doctor examine you, which I did. He was also a companion in our reserve officer. <laughs> 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 so I, <laughs> I, I got the, uh, I got the commission already. Yeah, Mr. President, one thing we're looking at also in ROA is the U.S. Merchant Marine. You've been awfully good to the armed forces, and U.S. Merchant Marine carries them there. We're looking yeah. at that as a very critical aspect of national defense. Well, we have some provisions that have been helpful, I know, too. Right. And I don't think there's going to be any change in those. Mm -hmm. you know. Anything we can do to help you, sir? What? Anything we can do to help you? Well, not right now. I, the thing we're dealing with is the drug bill up on the hill <laughs> right now, trying to get it before they get out of town. But I'll let you know. Well, we fought hard on the 48-hour issue because with Rebecca, of course, uh, and again, thanks to you, uh, we had good, good results again. Well, we want to thank you for that spirit that you put across this country in the last eight years. We've gone from people asking us how much longer do you have to go to those meetings to, gee, I wish I could go to those uh, <laughs> reserve <laughs> meetings and, and be a part of it. And that, that's a spirit that, that nobody's been able to do it. I don't know how many years. Now, these last eight years, we've got that spirit across that country. We just hope it keeps going. We can't think of that. It's, we've gone to a big waiting list in the Air Force Reserve now. We have, we have people that. lining up, wanting to come in. You didn't see that eight years ago. Now there's just that spirit. Gandhi, who is Hello. the uh, president and founder of the Memorial Foundation. And I want to tell you one thing. In 1983, when I was first time came to the United States to receive the Oscars, uh, I wrote a letter to you. And in 1984, when you addressed the General Assembly in the UN and you quoted Mahatma Gandhi, I was so moved, you know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I would like to take this opportunity and give you the Gandhi button. <laughs> And well, I would like you to wear this button. Well, thank you. You mean for this occasion here? I think it would be very good. It's perfect for this occasion. Thank you very much. Surprise those other people. There. <laughs> I'm Irish. <laughs> well, I'm glad you are. I'm that way, yes. <laughs> President Manmarjani, I'm the chairman of the Gandhi Foundation. Well, it's nice to see you there. Thank you so much, President. Mrs. Marjani, good evening. Thank you. Santana, Vice President of the Gandhi Foundation. 
Hello. Good afternoon, President. Hello. There. I'm Chad Sagura from your state of California, my good Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Laurel Birch. Nice to meet you. Come on, Dona. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Hello, T. Tusamaya. You did it? stands as a landmark in charting a new course for a safer, saner, and more hopeful future for all of humanity. The Mahatma Gandhi World Peace Award honors the memory of Mahatma Gandhi, the father of nonviolence, by honoring President Ronald Reagan, who has and is making a difference in the world by fostering world peace, nonviolence, and human dignity. I'm Ernbi Majani, as chairman of the Gandhi Foundation, and proud and deeply honored, sir, to present you with the Mahatma Gandhi World Peace Award. And this, uh, this award, uh, Mr. Ryoichi Sasakawa was a recipient of the Mahatma Gandhi World Peace Award last year. So Mr. Murjani requesting Mr. Sasakawa to, uh, to present this award for 1988.
The reason I had to make the notes here was because I wanted to mention the past recipients of this award. Mother Teresa, 1984. Jimmy Carter in 1985. President Aquino in 86. The Japanese shipbuilder known to you, Sasakawa, in 87. I understand that General Secretary Gorbachev will be receiving this next month for what he has done. Well, again, I repeat, I'm just deeply grateful to you, highly honored, and hope I can be deserving of it. Thank you. And uh, again, I would like to thank you very much that you have signed the legislation into law uh, designating October 2nd, 1988, uh, as a National Commemorative Day for Mahatma Gandhi in this country. And I thank you. And also, I thank for the senators and all the congressmen who have helped us, particularly Senator Wenya and Congressman Sola, who have taken the leadership for this legislation. And you made a history in this country. <laughs>